had never, and not as you know the people around you, not that they wish you, okay, they will wish you well, but you know, in their heart, there's another thing, but at the spoken word, understand, in your life from today, say amen. In your life from today, your life will be as a believer, the spoken word. And as we got back home, the servant was totally healed. And as we get back home, all the members of your body serving you as your servant, and they are completely made whole in Jesus' name. Look at number five. Number five, praise him before the prison doors open. You remember Paul and Silas? They had done a good work for the Lord, and the good work they have done for the Lord was misinterpreted, misplaced, misconstrued by uh, the people that were masters of that lady. Because they had said, in the name of Jesus, come out of her. And the devil came out. They were angry, and then they took them and put them in the prison. They beat them. And then at midnight, the midnight of sorrow, the midnight when everybody was asleep, but they were away. The midnight when it appears, everything is upside down for you and for me. The midnight when it appears, are we going to go through life like this? Instead of complaining, once again I remind you, don't complain. Instead of criticizing, instead of saying, God, where are you? Where are you? The people that are asking God such a question, and what, uh, I don't know what to use for that kind of question. Jesus, God had been for more than eternity. He was at the point of creation. Then he was with Israel. He did all this mighty thing. and was saying, where is God? God is still on the throne. God is still on the throne. Our problems will never shift God from the throne. They were at the midnight of their problem. And then what did they do? They prayed and they sang praises unto the Lord. They were sitting in prison. They prayed and sang praises unto the Lord. And it was midnight. It was dark, not even the light of a candle, but then uh, they sang and gave praises unto the Lord. And the doors were unlocked, but they sang and gave praises unto the Lord. And while they were praising the Lord, that's our secret. While they were praising the Lord, the foundation of the prison shook. The foundation of the prison was shake in Jesus' name. All the doors were open. The windows were open. And their shackles and their chains, everything they totally lose. They praised the Lord before the prison doors opened. That's the lesson we're learning before, before the miracle, before the signs and the wonders, before the healing, before the fig tree dried up. We praise the Lord. Look at number six there. Number six, praise him before the leprosy appears cleansed. These ten lepers came to the Lord and they said, they said, Lord, have mercy on us. They wanted cleansing. They wanted total uh, healing. And Jesus just said, go show yourself to the priest. They didn't say, is that all? No prayer? No touch? No shaking, no pouring, whatever on us, no anointing us. He just said, go show, show yourself to the priest. And he went joyfully. They were not disappointed. They were not complaining. If we can turn our faith around and understand that when God says it, it is done. And so we go on. We are alive and we are lively. We are happy. We are joyful. And we know the problem is so it says while they were going, all the ten of them Without exception, they were totally cleansed. And one man there is Samaritan. He was so excited. And then he ran by all the others who are going. You know, sometimes you have to have a mind of your own, a decision of your own. Look at that nine. They were going. And he came back unto the Lord. And we praises unto the Lord. And Jesus said, Were well, there not ten claims where are the other nine? Except this Samaritan. He said, Go thy way. Thy faith has made thee whole. Remember, he was already cleansed from leprosy. But now it's uh, Jesus said, Because of the praise. Because of glorifying the Lord, he said, go your way. Your faith has made you whole. Any other sin that needs to be touched and transformed and healed and uh, totally delivered from, 
your faith has made you hope. Look at number seven. In number seven, him before seeing the tree dried up. The tree dried up. There are fruitless trees. There are unprofitable trees. There are, you know, trees that just ruin and wreck our lives. And then Jesus said, no man eat fruit of that tree forever. And then he looked away. It's like, uh, you know, disciples were saying, uh-uh. Did anything happen? Did anything happen? The second day they came and they saw the tree from the root had totally dried up. We praise him. We know that whatever he says is performed. And whatever he says in your life tonight, and whatever he decrees in your life tonight, everything is done. Amen. Amen, it is done. But we we'll praise him before seeing the tree dried up. Jehoshaphat set up the singers and they praised the holiness of the Lord and the name of the Lord and they praised him for the answer that they had not seen. And as we come today and uh, we're praising the Lord, first of all, we must give our life to the Lord. And we we'll just say, the God who can do all this. He is going to be my savior. He is going to be my shepherd. He is going to be my security. He is going to be my fortress. He is going to be my healer. He is going to be my deliverer. He is going to be all in all for me. And therefore, I give everything of my heart, of my soul, of my life. I give unto him that will come into the family. And then we'll make a request before the Lord for healing, for breakthrough, for deliverance, for anything, for everything. And when we hear the final amen, then we'll begin to praise the Lord and good things will happen in every life in Jesus' name. Eyes bowed and eyes closed. We're going to call upon the Lord now. You want to give your life to the Lord that this great God, this mighty God, and this God that works in possibilities in every life, that he'll become your father. He'll become your God. He'll become your Redeemer. And at the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ will avail for you. Where are you there? Raise up your hand. The Lord is going to do it. And where are you there? Whether you're on television or you're on the radio, you're online, anywhere you are. And whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is your time. Your moment of salvation. Your moment of forgiveness. Your moment of freedom. Freedom, your moment of coming into the book of life. Raise up that hand. Please stand up, stand up wherever you are. On the right hand side, left hand side, at the back there, over there, everywhere, anywhere you are, over the television, over the radio, online. This is the moment of salvation and forgiveness and freedom for you. Thank you. God bless you there. God bless you there. God bless you there. Please uh, keep on standing and let that, let that hand, uh, you know, be uh, kept up as I pray with you now. Turn away from your sin, turn away from your evil, turn away uh, from everything that is said uh, not of God in your life and say, Lord, here am I, I give myself completely unto you. We're praying together now, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you for what you've done already. I thank you for all these that have uh, raised up their hands and they're giving their lives unto you unreservedly. And they're going to love you now with all their heart, all their soul, all their mind. And they believe in you that what you have said, that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. That you will fulfill it for every life, for every boy, every girl, every man, every woman, everyone, everywhere. Grant them your forgiveness and your salvation right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for what you've done. I know it is done. In Jesus' name, I pray. And everybody shout, Amen. Now. The, our, our counselors will go around now and they give you the sleeves to feel 
and uh, to say the correct thing, do the correct thing there. And the Lord himself has written your name in the book of life. But we need to do this so that we can follow up on you new members of the family of God. And the joy of salvation will continue in your life in Jesus' name. We ask our uh, coordinating uh, overseer there to please take over. And uh, in every family, you will see all those things, uh, the information on the screen there. And the Lord confirm the salvation in your life in Jesus. Let's do this quickly. And then I'll come back uh, to pray for you that all your challenges and all the problems, everything will vanish away in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Congratulations for those that have just given their lives to Christ. You stood up. Keep standing now. And our orchards, we move quickly to them. Give them the sleep to feel. And please feel it correctly because it will enable us to be of further assistance and help to you. You are standing up. Can I see your hand up? Those who are standing up, can you wave your hand, please? Thank you. Keep standing, please. Keep standing. Ushers, please quickly get to them now and uh, give them a sleep to feel. And please, preferably, we want you to fill them in capital letters, very legibly. Your correct name, your address. Please do that now. Our counselors are around you. Please keep standing until you are attended to. If you have not been attended to, keep standing. They will come around you and give you, you know, the sleep to feel. They will also give you a special package from the covenant, our Father in the Lord. Please do that. God bless you mightily. For those online, if you are watching online and you gave your life to Christ after the pastor's message this evening, there is a link, gckhq.org slash connect. So we can assist you further in your new work with Christ. The radio and television audience, you also can see the number, the phone number, right before you on your screen there. You can get in touch with us on WhatsApp. The number is plus. Two three four nine one five four 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 nine two six three plus two three four nine one five four 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 nine two six three and I want to inform you that there will be a special meeting called the Believer's uh, Class for all those who gave their life to Jesus during this program. One hour before the commencement of the crusade. That means it's starting from tomorrow and Tuesday. Don't forget, one hour before the crusade. That means that you have to be here by 4 o'clock. If the crusade is starting by 5, we expect you here by 4 o'clock tomorrow for the, the believer's class. There will be special online banquet for all those watching online who gave their life to Christ on Sunday, that is to, uh, the 4th of June, coming Sunday, 2023. More details about these will be sent to you. Our pastor, our Father in the Lord, We'll be highly delighted to have you join this special banquet. 
There will also be a special physical banquet for those who gave their lives to Christ from all physical locations in your group, your region, your state, and nations. On Saturday, on his Sunday, 4th June, 2023, details also will be communicated to you. If you've just received your miracle, please share your testimony with us via the WhatsApp number being displayed or testimony link on the screen. You can also record a video of your testimony and share with us via WhatsApp and Telegraph. Please, let's do that. Ushers, have you attended to them? If you have not received your own um, sleep and package, you can wave your hand here so that we can see you and you can be promptly attended to. Our Father in the Lord will be shortly coming up to pray for you. <laughs> the devil is in trouble. I say the devil is in trouble because he's praying with anointing that cannot be challenged by any power, either on earth, under the earth, anywhere they are found. The power of God, the anointing of God will destroy all the works of the devil. You believe each other loud, amen. amen. Loud, an amen that will embarrass the devil. Amen. amen. God bless you. Praise the Lord. It's time now to get a miracle. You will get your miracle. You will get your healing. Whatever it is you are asking the Lord for, the Lord will do it. And the praises of the Lord will be in your mouth in Jesus. Let's rise up. Let's rise up. And then present that problem to the Lord. And in your word, according to his spoken word, his switching word, that thing will be done in your life in Jesus' name. Let's pray now. Lay your hand where you have the challenge and raise up the other hand and the power of the Lord will take everything that should not be in your life, in your body, in your family, will take everything away. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you. We thank you for the examples you've shown us in scripture that as we ask you, you always answer and you answer immediately. You answer speedily. You answer confidently. And we know that as we decree and as we pray that you will grant the answer. I pray for everyone, whatever disease, whatever sickness, whatever financial constraint, and whatever the pressure, the pain, whatever may be the problem in your mighty way, in your good way, take everything away in Jesus' name. I pray that the healing for every form of disease. Having names or not having names, Lord, I pray, take all that disease away. Heal your people in Jesus' name. Everyone there over the radio, everyone there over the television, everyone there, wherever they are, any part of the world, your power cuts across everywhere, everyone. Fulfill your promise in Jesus' name. Everything they have asked you, everything they have desired of you, everything they have requested of you in their heart, and they have said, oh Lord, do this in your faithfulness. Do everything in Jesus' name. Heal the sick, deliver the oppressed, cancel all those works of the devil, and fulfill your will, your word, in every life in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord, because I know that you have answered. And everyone will see the glory of God. Everyone will praise the Lord for speedy answer that we have given every one of us today in Jesus name Lord put testimony in every mouth thank you Lord because I know you have answered in Jesus name I pray 
Amen. It is done. It is done. Remember, no complaints. Remember, no more money. Remember, you are praising the Lord. Now, even before you say anything, the Lord has done it. And that final, amen, it's done. And whatever you couldn't do before, you couldn't bend before, you couldn't see before, you couldn't hear before, you couldn't walk or run or whatever, you can do it now because the Lord himself has touched you and healed you and delivered you. He has answered your prayer. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now, our overseer will take over and uh, we'll hear testimonies of what the Lord has done today. Praise Praise ye the Lord. It's done, it's done, it's done, it's done. The Lord has taught you now. You check up, check up. The word of power has been released on you right away there. And you need to check up and confirm the healing. And I can assure you the yoke is broken, the sickness is healed, and the powers of the enemies have been destroyed in your life. Check it up, check it up, check it up. Check it off. Why, why are you running away? Why are you hustling and, uh, you know, uh, hurrying home? Sit back and listen to the testimonies of others. You can catch your own by so doing. Sit down quietly. Your, 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 your miracle is you, you, very manifest in your life. Can you just move to the right hand, I mean, left hand side there so that we can give you opportunity to testify to the glory of God. We can celebrate your healing. We can celebrate your deliverance. We can celebrate the goodness of the Lord right in your life. Check it off. The miracle is there. Check it off. The healing has, take place, has taken place. Check it off. The Lord has lifted that body up your head in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. He never fails. He's the undisappointing liberator. And he has liberated you tonight. Come out. Come and testify to the goodness of God. Let us celebrate. Let's celebrate you. Let's celebrate your miracle. Let's celebrate the goodness of God in your life. Come out and move to my left hand side here if uh, you've seen the touch of God upon your life. We're waiting for you. Tonight we want to celebrate God's loving kindness in your life. Just move to the extreme left here and see our counselors, our leaders there. They will listen to you and give you opportunity to testify to the goodness of God. Why that is going on? Let's be celebrating with songs of praise to the goodness and faithfulness of the unfailing God.
We're still listening to the testimonies now. Praise the Lord. I'm Dr. Akiumi Akiemi. I'm a consultant of obstetrician and gynecologist. Uh, this night, uh, we have a number of our brethren here that have testimonies to the goodness of God. Testimonies following the GCK uh, prayers from the man of God. The first brethren we have here are the couple before me, brother and sister Eugene. Let them share their testimony. Brethren, praise the living Jesus. Hallelujah. The Lord has done it for me. By God's grace, my name is Sister Mercy Eugene. I'm from Dauphin District, Ikoi, Lagos, Highland. By God's grace, my testimony are going like this. I married since 2009. There is no solution. I went to so many hospitals. There is no solution. At last, they now advised me to go to Lourdes. I go to Lourdes, they say I should do IVF. I did it. There is no solution. They say I should come back for the second one. And I told my husband, can we go there? He said we should go. I said, no, I can't go back there again. We now decided to stay on our own. As we stay, I went that loot since 2017. I stayed for that 2017. I decided to go anywhere. By God's grace, during the uh, Okuruju Crusades, the nun told us we should invite people for the Crusades. And I started telling people on my office about it. By God's grace, before that crusade, God has touched me. <laughs> on Saturday night, I went to bed. Two of us will pray. We went to bed. I sleep. Under my sleeping, I have a dream. On that dream, I saw myself inside church. I've been praying and weeping. I'm praying and weeping. One woman now tapped me, Sister, why are you crying? Our Father in the Lord is here. Why are you crying? I now opened my eyes on that dream. I saw myself, we sit the same seat with our daddy. Daddy said, my daughter, congratulations. And I shake my hand. He said, clean your tears. You will never share tears again. It is well with you. And I say, yes. I stopped crying on that dream. I wake up suddenly. As I wake up, I saw myself with tears. For me to wake my husband, I can't wake him. I started praying only me alone. I pray, I went back to sleep. We wake up Sunday morning. I supposed to tell him the dream. I forget to tell him. And we did the money devotion together. I went to church and my husband went to his office. As, we, as I went to the church, they are uh, talking about the crusades again. Jesus now came up, he said, as I entered the church, I started praying and crying again. Just now say, it is well with you. And I say, amen. As I hear that word, I remember the dream immediately. I say, it is well with me. It is well with my family. And I believe that I will never cry again. I come back home. My husband closed from his office. He came back. And I told him, Daddy, do you have the dream that I had last night? I told him, he said, okay, let us go to the prayer. We now pray together. After that prayer, that is the beginning of the sickness. The sickness started. I went to office. I can't be able to walk. I can't do anything. Then I told me to go to hospital. 
I say I won't go to hospital. Nothing is stopping me. It's only malaria and typhoid. They say no. I should go. I say I won't go. Then I say okay. I should go home. I go back home. My husband came and meet me unconscious in the ground. He said, what is going on? I told him that I'm feeling headed, fever civilently. So he now went out and go and call one nurse. The nurse now come and asked me, sister, when do you see your administration last? And I don't want person to ask me about that administration because I've been spending a lot to see, to carry baby like this. I can't. For, t for good 14 years, I can't get. But this woman come and asked me. So Anand told her, so so date. She now said, okay, can I give her my urine? I gave her my urine. She now go and tested it and came and told me that I am pregnant. I said, what? <laughs> she, she told me I'm pregnant. After that, I began to cry. My husband asked her, ah, why are you crying? Have you forget the dream that you told me that our daddy visited you? And I stopped that crying. I clean my tears. I say, it is well with me. It is well with my family. I believe that I got it. <laughs> After that, I went to hospital. I confirmed it. It is real. Here is my miracle. <laughs> Excellency. <laughs> His name is Excellence. Ori Praise the Lord. 14 year history of infertility gone. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm praying that anyone that is here looking for a fruit of the womb, my sister, don't give up. Don't give up. Believe that is God. That is God here. Believe. Don't go anywhere. Don't shake. Thank you very much. Pray very well. God Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Tears of self-pity dried up. Are you also shedding tears on anything at all concerning your life? Tonight, through the prayer of the man of God, such tears are dried up and you have your miracle in Jesus' name. Another testifier. Here is um, uh, Sister Peace Odafi. Uh, she has a story to tell. A very long story to tell, but she will cut it short for us. History of a long time. I think she will tell her story herself. Praise the Lord. The Lord is good. My name's uh, Peace Odafi from Diamond District. By the grace of God, I joined this, co this commission in the year 2021. I was just taking a stroll in my area and I met some group of people. They were going about doing public city. So they gave me a tract and invited me for their crusade. Then I collected the tract, I got home. The first day I didn't honor the crusade, but the following day I remembered the tract and then I decided to honor the crusade. And lo and behold, when I got there, I met with the Lord. When the Father, when our Father and the Lord preached, it was like He was just talking to me. Before the crusade, I had been a drug addict for 34 years. I've been addicted to tobacco because when I was five years old, my mother usually gave it to me. And then I grew up to become addicted to it. At a time, I became tired of it. I thought I could do away with it by myself, but to no avail. Every year, I kept on uh, doing from one the New Year resolution to the other, to no avail. I couldn't just stop it on my own. What even baffled me most was that there was one day I threw it away. I said, enough is enough. I threw it away inside the dustbin, but to my greatest surprise, in the midnight around two, I could not sleep. The thing was just telling me, go and pick it back, go and pick it back. And before I knew what was happening, I went straight to the dustbin and pick it. 
And then I started crying, saying, God, what, what kind of problem is this? Deliver me, O God, but glory be to God Almighty. Who made it possible for me to attend that crusade? Immediately I had that message. I started crying. The, it was like a yoke was broken in the inside of me. And when I got home, I, I, I picked the tobacco and said, what? You mean I've been taking this nonsense for all these years? What are you? I said, okay, if you have power over me, come, unwrap yourself and put yourself in my mouth. And the thing remained, I said, oh, you have failed. Jesus has defeated you. That was how I became free. And throughout 2022, there was nothing like tobacco, even up till now. Praise the Lord! I want to use this medium to pray that as many of you that are addicted to one drug or the other, God that did this for me is able to do it for you. And I, I, I encourage our daddy to continue. He should not stop because by the grace of God, I'm a product of this GCK. If there was no GCK, I would still remain in my bondage. But glory be to God who delivered me through GCK. Praise the Lord! Praise the Lord. 34-year history of drug addiction, particularly tobacco abuse. That is um, medically, the active agent there is nicotine and she gets addicted to nicotine and dependent on it. But through the power, through the prayer of the man of God, the power of the addiction was broken and she has been set free. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Jesus is the unfailing liberator. And whatever addiction you are into tonight, the Lord that did it for her will do your own. And all that testify. Praise the Lord. Praise Matter gives us. By the grace of God, I'm saved. My name is Pastor Moses Abanuji in the Bida Church in Old, Old District of uh, Shudi, Lagos. Uh, by the grace of God, there's a miracle that the Lord did in my life. Before this thing happened, I, the Lord commissioned work, his work into my hand, whereby our years have approved for me, have, have approved for me that I should be going out within Lagos and outside Lagos to preach the gospel to Iberia people. And the Lord has been helping us through the outreaches to the end that we have planted up to 60-something 60 60 churches by the grace of God. And on 20, on 20 of last year, in October, I came here to come and interpret, because we are here in in light transmission, to come and interpret message over here. That is power night. After the power night on that day, I went to Shodi to go and buy, I want to go and buy a part, because I did electrical work. Over there, when I want to buy the part, I heard a voice. Because that time that I said the uh, years approved for us, he told, the Lord told me over there that when I'm doing his own, he'll be doing my own. When I was at Toshodi on that 20, I heard a voice that, did I not come, did I not tell you that when we are doing my own, you, I will do your own? Ah, I was touched. And, and the way I was, I was not on myself again. I said, that means I'm in the, in the wrong place. I left there. I have never buy, buy my, I buy the part I want to buy uh, to in the quantity. I now left there. I started coming. Then I, I, was, I started seeing people buying things in the show day. I said, ah, is it not people that were buying things and they sell and buying and they're doing? I said, what happened? I heard another, another voice. He said, my own is different. Then the third, uh, third voice I heard before I started coming home finally, he said, I should look up, I should not look down. Then when I'm coming, coming home, on reaching home, I now explain to my wife. Then my wife also encouraged me that, did he not tell me before, when I told him for the first time that the Lord said, when I'm doing so, I'm do, he will do, he'll be doing my own. I said, God, I have surrendered all my life to you. I went somewhere to go and rest, where I used to sit down to receive breeze. I just had just a heavy breeze from my back, just come, and over the air, I, will, uh, 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 I, have, I have partial stroke. 
my right hand, I cannot take it. My left, uh, my, uh, my, my leg, I cannot take it. I cannot speak. When my wife just see me, he now say, I, he now say I should wait. So I should pack it, uh, all the things that he's selling in the shop, so I should go home. On reaching home, I cannot do anything. I can't, I, my body is not functioning again. The, the, left, the right, right, leg, right hand, right leg, and I cannot talk. When I even call my leader, uh, Pastor Bambanya, to tell him, because we interpret together on Thursday, that is something that I've been for that day. I call him, I cannot speak, I cannot explain myself, unless my wife that to explain. Even when I call my, uh, my father-in-law, the CS, to also explain, to explain to him, I cannot talk. But to the glory of God, uh, before that time, I was in the next, I called some of our brethren. They came, they really prayed with me. And the next day, they said I should go to hospital. They can't, they the want to come and carry, because I can't, I can't bath my, I can't bath by myself. I can't do anything. I was carried to hospital. They say, oh my, they say my brain has been affected. They should carry me to general hospital that I'm going to admit it. But part thank God, my wife said that GCK or Ibori, Ibori GCK is about to reach. He said, God of GCK will do wonders. Praise the Lord. And the first day of the program, which that started in GCK or Ibori, after the father, after the father in law preached, and he started the ministration, my hand I cannot carry again, carry before, I lay my hand, and it started functioning. Before the GCK, it's on Sunday, on Sunday of age, I started moving, I started walking. Since that time, the Lord Praise delivered me. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We can hear our pastor speaking. He had a left hemispheric uh, cardiovas uh, uh, cerebrovascular accident. That is, the left part of the brain was affected, which translated to the right side of the arms and the limbs not being able to walk. So he had a, he had a stroke, a left-sided, a right-sided stroke, but a left hemispheric uh, um, uh, accident. And as a result of that, he could not walk. Can you see him? Can you walk, sir? You can see him raise both hands. You can see there's no deficit. Praise in the Lord. Let's celebrate, let's celebrate, let's celebrate, let's celebrate. behind GCK is breaking through the airwaves and a lot of things are happening online. We want to listen to testimonies from the social media. Truthfully, it's a season of massive and global celebration here tonight. I want to bring to you testimonies from the church official YouTube page and here we have David Denny testifying of how God delivered him from depression of two months and right about now i'm going to the official page of the church on facebook uh, we have solomon alaba telling us that the lord mightily delivered him from stomach ache while the gs was praying and immediately after the gs prayers tonight stomach ache vanished we are bringing you another testimony of miraculous global explosion of a woman who has been barren for so many years, but God gave her twins. Twenty-six years, almost twenty-six years of marriage, waiting, 
believing God, trusting God for the fruits of home. My name is Frank Kaudo. I got married 1997, August 9. Then my expectation was that the conception will soon take place. But along the lines, it fell another way. But I kept on believing God and trusting the Lord. All this why I've been so sorrowful. It has been a pains, agony, worry, thinking, rejected. In fact, I don't know how to express it. We pray, we go here and there for treatment, no improvement. Five years, 10 years, 15 years waiting in 2022, precisely that God that can never pay. Message, GCK, I hold on to God. This is the GCK that I've just started. Before the GCK, they will end it. God remember me. Along the lines, she fell sick. I, I took her to the hospital. The doctor had to run a test, and also it was confirmed. I smiled. Since that day, a great joy everywhere I go to, a great joy in my heart till today. To appreciate Pastor Dr. Doryev Kumuji for GCK visions, and I'm believing God that the Lord will strengthen him and uh, really empower him to continue with this wonderful program to touch the life of the people across the globe. I say, God, who has done this for my family? Who has added joy? Who has taken away sorrow? In my family life, may his name forever be praised. We will ever be grateful to God for keeping these children for us in Jesus' mighty name. Shall praise the Lord. As you are shouting, you are receiving your home where you are seated in the name of Jesus Christ. You will not be onlooker, you will be partaker in Jesus' name. We have more from the Alpha location here. Praise the Lord. Uh, Pastor Abba Bernard is here. He has a testimony to give, testimony to the power of God uh, following the prayer of the man of God at one of the GCK programs. Praise the Lord. I bless the name of the Lord for the privilege to be here tonight to talk about the goodness of the Lord. My name is Pastor Abba Bennett. I serve in the Fed and the District of Bagada Group. I want to share the testimony of God's goodness uh, towards my life. I lost my aged mom in a prayer, and we needed to go for the burial. But it's like the devil was waiting for such a time to embarrass the entire family. God has been very favorable to us in the family. It's like my father's family is called Deeper Life Family. Because I have two junior brothers who are also pastors in the church, and one of my junior sisters also married to a pastor's wife. As a result of this, it's like the enemy said, we are waiting for the time when they are going to bury their mother so that they can embarrass but our God showed up. I pray that your own time God will show up in your life. Where the burial date was set, and then we're preparing, but then April, that is Ghana Global Crusade was just coming, and then uh, my junior ones were preparing at home. But just about three weeks to the burial, the house in which, that is the family house, collapsed. And my junior brother was inside, but then the wall fell outward, not inside. It would have been another disaster. That is number one failure of the devil. Number two, the two of my juniors who are pastors also came down with a, a typhoid fever. Again, God took control and God healed them. 
the day I was to travel was the last day of the global crusade. That was on the 25th, it was Tuesday. I had to travel with my wife and two other sisters and a driver before my wife objected that I should not drive. She knows that driving is my hobby. And because of that, I agreed with her and we hired a driver. To call the long story short, we left Lagos as early as about 6 a.m. and we arrived Otupa in Benue State at about 8 o'clock. When we go to the town, I instructed the driver to park so that we could participate in the pastor's prayer because already the pastor was on. We were listening to the message online while the vehicle was moving. The, the driver parked and we were listening to the pastor's uh, prayer. All of a sudden, I felt within myself that I was extremely become, I became very, very weak. And all of a sudden, I told my wife, I said, call my junior brother to come around very quickly. And my wife was like, we're already in the town. Why do you need to call for your junior brother? And that was the last conversation I knew I had with my wife. All of a sudden, I went blank. I didn't know what was happening again. Where? At the last amen of the pastor, I opened my eyes. And then they started telling me what actually transpired. What happened was actually was, was, was that when I told my wife to call my Gino brother, I just, I just passed on. I just passed on. And then the driver was confused, and everybody were, they were praying, thank God. A devil came at the wrong time. And at the last amen of the, of the, of the pastor, I opened my eye and I was like, what's happening here? Then they started telling me, this is what transpired. Praise the Lord. The Lord will show up in your case. Praise the Lord. You've heard the testimony of a brother he probably suffered from cardiac arrest, which led to his passing away suddenly. Uh, but as you can see, he's speaking with us, he's communicating, he came back to life. Thank God for that. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. There is resuscitative power in the last amen. And that's what brought him to life. Praise the Lord! Praise the Lord. I have Sister Angela Uzozie here. She wants to testify concerning a younger brother. So I'll give her the floor to give a testimony concerning her brother. Church, praise the name of the Lord. Praise the living God. Our God is good. My name is Sister Angela Uzozie from Ikosiketu. I'm here to testify the goodness of God. The merciful hand of God that brought my junior brother back to life from three days in coma. Praise the name of the Lord. So it happened that uh, on early February this year, my brother fell ill. So they took him to hospital. He said some days there or weeks, they discharge him. They said they cannot handle the case. They will transfer, uh, refer him to another hospital, which they did. Those ones carried their own test, uh, discharge him. He came home. Some days he came home. I was in a leadership, uh, Tuesday leadership meeting when my phone rang. I went outside. I heard the wife crying. I said, Angus, what happened? He said that uh, Benson collapsed since morning, and since that time, he has been unconscious, he's not moving, he's not doing anything. I said, okay, there is no problem. What of my brothers? He said, yes, they have called their own pastors. They have been, that our house is like church, that many people are there praying, that they said it's spiritual attack. I said, okay, this spiritual attack, you have come at the wrong time, because it happened on Tuesday. That week, on Thursday, will be the commence of uh, February GCK edition. Praise the name of the Lord. So on that um, Wednesday, Tuesday, Wednesday, in the night, after my midnight prayer, 
when I slept, I had a dream. In that dream, I saw some people. They were telling me, you said uh, you are born again. You know how to pray. Okay, pray. You better pray for your brother because we have come for him. After him, you are the next person they, that they are coming to take. I said, it is a lie. It cannot stand. It will not happen because I'm not for you people. So as I was just talking, and I saw my mother in the Lord, the person that converted me to deeper life. She said, hey, Angela, what is that? I told her what happened. He said, it is a lie. She now took, my, took me straight to our father in the Lord in that dream. So our father in the Lord now look at me. Say, he asked my mother in the Lord, he said, ah, Christy, is this the Angela you have been telling me? That sister said, yes. So she handed me over to our father in the Lord. So our father in the Lord just looked at me. He said, ah, ah, Angela, but you don't have problems. I said, thank you, sir. So now, our father in the Lord now handed me over to his wife. He said, yeah, mommy, see your daughter. Take care of her. So and now mommy in the Lord took me. That's our pastor's wife took me and started singing. It's okay. I should join her in singing. So she started singing in tongues. Everything she was singing, I followed her, but I did not understand what she was singing. It's only when he met, she mentioned Angela that I would hear. Well, after singing, she now looked at me and smiled. He said, I know you did not understand the language. I said, yes, mom. He said, okay, that she will sing it in the language that I will understand. She now started singing it in Hebrew land. Angela, in where Jesus in where he any name, Angela, in where Jesus, or the Korage. Those that understand Hebrew, they will know what I'm singing. He said, Angela, you have Jesus, you have everything. So after that uh, song, he said, go, go and be singing. That is your song. So I woke up from that sleep, uh, that dream. As I woke up, I said, okay, I prayed. The, the evening was the crusade. So when we went for the crusade, after the ministration of the man of God, time for prayer. He said we should lay our hands on where we are having challenges. Even if we have somebody that, we are, that is not feeling fine, wherever the person is, that we should just stand in the gap for the person, that God Almighty will touch that person and will heal the person. Even if the person is in coma. Immediately he mentioned that I jumped out of the church because we are doing it inside the church premises. So I started to bless and praising God. So at the end of the of GCK, that Thursday, the first day of uh, that uh, February GCK, I went home. When I got home, I did not want to call because my brother, they are in the village. I didn't want to call them because of their younger daughter, that small daughter that is with me. I didn't want her to know what was going on. So I kept quiet. In the morning on Friday, when the girl went to school, I called my brother's wife to know how far. Because with the assurance that the pastor in the Lord gave me, and the song that the mother in the Lord sang for me, I had a lot of confidence that, yes, my brother will surely be okay. So in the morning when I called, my brethren, lo and behold, my brother that was in coma for three days, he was the person that picked my call. Praise the name of the Lord. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You've heard the testimony. The brother was in a state of coma. Although she didn't tell us exactly what the state, what was the primary cause of the uh, uh, loss of consciousness is, probably because with the loss of uh, not ability, inability to move the limbs and loss of muscle tone, probably suffered an hemorrhagic um, uh, uh, cerebrovascular accident or suffer from some other things that could have resulted in coma. But the important thing is that by the prayer of God, she was, I mean, he was brought back to life. Praise the Lord.
the Lord. I have um, Sister Chibuzo Christova here. She has a testimony to give. Let's hear her testimony. Children of God, praise the Lord. I am so happy to be in the presence of the Lord to give this testimony. During GCK at Ikorodu, total emancipation to Christ. I was pregnant to this baby. Because of what I passed through last year, I was pregnant at 37 weeks plus. The baby died in my womb. I never knew. Although I was going to attend state, they, they couldn't detect it. So on that fateful day, that Wednesday, I went to clinic. That is when they discovered that the baby was no more alive. And the doctor asked me to, to, to come and, and deliver the baby so that they can induce me. I said, okay, tomorrow I will come. The following day, I went. Praise God. I stayed in labor room for five days. In pains, the baby refused to come out. The, 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 the drugs they gave to me was not working. I was praying, calling our pastor to pray for me, and the, the brethren in the church were praying for me, and the Lord did it. On that Monday evening, the Lord helped me. I delivered the baby safely, although the enemy came. But our pastor, God used our pastor to pray for me. He said, you spirit of death, I command you to come out of her. The pain was so much that I could not bear anymore. I was just passing on. The breeze was coming out, the breath was coming out from my nostril. I, 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 you know, I couldn't bear the pain anymore. That is when our pastor prayed for me, Pastor Andrew. And immediately I received strength to push out to the baby. Praise God. And I am alive. And the fear to get pregnant again was on me. The same year, just six months later, I took in of this one, which I never planned. And God saw me too at Ikorodu Crusade. I was praying, I said, God, help me. Then the devil came. He said, you survive on the other one, this one you will not survive with. I said, you will tell a lie, you came in a wrong place. During the crusade, midnight, I wake up, I'll go to the, to the altar to cry unto God. And he, he, you know, he, 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 he told me that I shall be saved in delivering. And the Lord has did it. And I promise God that if you deliver me in this childbearing, I will carry this child to you to give thanks of what you have done for me. And here is the baby. God has delivered me. I am alive. The baby is alive. And her name is lifted. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Our sister here had um, an adverse uh, pregnancy outcome, what we call an intrauterine fetal demise at 37 weeks as a term. And that brought a, uh, what we call a stress disorder to her, a post-traumatic stress disorder. Delivery was complicated, but she got out of it. Now, that posed a problem for her subsequent pregnancies, uh, but she got pregnant, and to God be the glory, the pregnancy went uneventful, and she succeeded in delivering. And here is the baby she's presenting here. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Can we all rise on our feet now as we Bless the name of the Lord. Let's thank him for what he has done here tonight. Your prison doors have opened. Your Red Sea has been dried up. That sickness or disease has departed from your body. Right now, you are more than conqueror. God bless the name of the Lord. You've gotten your miracle and it will manifest. You will be a testifier in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Bless the name of the Lord, for our Father in the Lord that have been used of God to be a blessing to us tonight. And remember, 
The program continues tomorrow, Monday, and also the grand finale will be on Tuesday. Don't miss it. There is public holiday tomorrow. There is no reason why we cannot be, we, we shall not be here. Fill up the entire hall. Let's go out there, publicize the program, and the Lord will bless every one of us in Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, we thank you, we bless you, we exalt you, we magnify your name. You are a faithful God. Thank you, Lord. You have confirmed in all ramifications you are the one behind this program of GCK. Hopes have been restored and the deliverances have been experienced. Healing has taken place. We return all the glory back to you in Jesus' name. All these, your children, each and every one of them has a testimony in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And tomorrow, some of them will come here to testify to the faithfulness and the goodness of the Lord. As we go now, we pray your presence will go with us in Jesus' name. Bless our Father in the Lord mightily and renew his strength. Strengthen him with might. And Lord, we pray by your spirit in the inner man in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Your loudest, amen.